Alright, so there's been this meme that's been going around for a while in the whole web development space called JavaScript fatigue. And the idea is there's just too many frameworks, too many languages, and too many libraries that are just coming out all the time, especially in the front end web development space, that is just exhausting trying to keep up with all of these and learning new frameworks and libraries all the time just completely burns some people out and they've completely lost all passion for web development. And I can totally understand where they're coming from. If you really want to be on the bleeding edge of everything, all these new frameworks and everything coming out, it almost seems all the time, it can really just feel overwhelming at times. But I kind of wanted to offer a counterpoint to that in this video in that I've never really felt completely overwhelmed by all this JavaScript that you supposedly have to learn in order to stay relevant in the industry. So I just kind of wanted to go over how I avoid burning out and how I avoid feeling overwhelmed from all this JavaScript that you have to learn and how you can as well. So the first thing I would say is that web development is honestly not really that different from what it was 15 years ago in that if you want to put a website online, okay, basically all you need to know is HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript if you really want to make it a little bit more interactive, completely optional. But just writing HTML, CSS, those basic things, they still work. And if you want to build a completely bare bones website, just a minimal website with just those, you're totally fine with just using HTML and CSS. They still work, and that's not changing anytime soon. But of course, you've probably heard of all these different frameworks that you should or you have to learn. Like if you want to build a blog, you should learn WordPress or Hugo or Gatsby JS or all these different things. And if you just want to build a simple website, you can just use HTML and CSS. It's fine. If you don't want to learn a front end framework like React JS, you can just use vanilla JavaScript. It t totally works just fine. Big websites are using it, like GitHub is just using vanilla JS, no front end framework. And honestly, you can get by without using a lot of these modern frameworks that have come, become ubiquitous throughout the industry. Just these basic web technologies are still the same as they've ever been. And you can get by with just knowing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And only if you actually require something more do you actually have to use it. For instance, I didn't learn React JS until I felt like I really needed to learn it. If you're just building some small application online, there's absolutely no point in learning React.js, but if you're building something more complicated out that can really benefit from the abstraction that you use with something like React.js, then by all means, at that point, learn it. But you don't need to learn it before then. It's just that a lot of these people that are newer to web development, they see this gigantic web developer roadmap of things that you absolutely must learn, and I can see how that can be overwhelming. But what I did when I was first learning web development is just build stuff that's interesting to me. So I would just build some small website for some niche hobby that I had. And only when I wanted to build something more would I actually learn it. So I had an idea for an application that needed a back end with a database and all that. And only then did I actually learn a back end language and set that all up. Before that, I was just building these small browser based applications with just vanilla JavaScript and I didn't see the need to learn any backend language unless I'm actually going to use it. So what I would recommend is only learn technologies as you actually need them. If the only reason you're learning some new framework or library is because it's cool on Reddit or Hacker News right now, that's not really a very good reason to learn something. So all of these older technologies that worked before still work. And believe it or not, you can still build a website with PHP, even though it's not popular. Oh no, you might get made fun of on Reddit because you used PHP. Maybe somebody will make a mean joke about PHP and how much they hate it. But it still works and people still get paid to make websites with these old technologies. So don't feel like you have to be on the bleeding edge of the web if you don't want to be. You can still be successful if you want to make a website without learning all these crazy technologies. So one creator that I really like is Peter Levels. He built sites like nomadlist.com and Remote OK, two really popular sites that have gone on to create him more than a million dollars per year. And they're just built with PHP and not much else. And the fact that he's been able to grow it to over a million dollar a year business 
without having to use any complicated frameworks or anything. Just shows that you don't need to hop on the trendiest framework just to get started and create something. There's no point in waiting to build something until after you've learned all these various things. Just start with what you know already and if you absolutely have to, learn something new, but otherwise, you don't really need to. Even on a more micro level, like if you're using something like React.js already, you don't necessarily need to hop on the latest and greatest things. So a few years back, I know I was using React Router with all of my React projects, and then Reach Router came along, and it was supposedly so much better than React Router. It had all these better features than just plain React Router if you wanted to create routes in your application. But honestly, I never really learned it. I just continued to use React Router and it still works great to this day. I've been using all of my routing needs with React Router and it still works great. Same with maybe some new form library, like maybe you've heard about React Hook Form when some older form library that you were using before works just as fine. Even something like React Hooks, which is very trendy, people like to use it. The thing is, old class-based components with React.js work just fine. And if you don't want to bother to learn something new, then you can continue supporting these old class components and nothing's going to happen. So honestly, you only have to learn the things that you want to. And sometimes I do want to learn new things. I'm not just stuck in the past, okay? But if I'm working on a hobby project and I do see some technology that looks interesting and maybe it can help me a little bit, improve my workflow maybe, then I will take time to learn it. But if it's something I'm not so interested in it, or I feel overwhelmed with too many things at the moment, then there's no reason to switch to something new that you have to learn and reset your workflow. Just stick with the old thing, honestly. So the second thing I would say is that you really don't wanna be on the bleeding edge of web technology. So how many times has some new framework or a new way of doing things come along and then within one or two years, the project has just been abandoned, seeing almost no use because it didn't really take off. It had a whole bunch of hype, but nothing really happened with it. So I would really recommend only learning something that is going to stand the test of time. So if you want to learn some front end framework like React.js or Vue, okay, go ahead because these have been around for many years. They have really wide community support and are not going away anytime soon but maybe hold off on learning some newer technologies like Svelte in the case of front-end frameworks or a lot of these newer libraries that just pop up and see an initial hype, but then just kind of fall off and are never heard from again. And another problem with these newer frameworks or libraries is that they're more fragile than these time-tested frameworks and libraries. So if you're one of the first to hop on a new bandwagon, you might not have the kind of support that you would with an older, more time-tested technology. There may be a lot of bugs as kinks are worked out. And you're honestly taking a risk with trying a lot of these new technologies out because like I said, they might be here today and gone tomorrow. So personally, I don't use any brand new technologies. Maybe I'll try it out, see if it looks interesting, but I'm not going to use it in any serious projects because it's probably just going to invite more headache than it's worth. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, then just wait a year or two after something comes out before you actually learn it. There's no real rush. And just because something's trendy on Twitter does not mean that you need to immediately adopt it into your workflow. You can say, okay, that looks cool, but let's hold off on a while before I actually attempt to use it or try to learn it. So that's how I avoid the JavaScript fatigue and being stressed out because there's too many things to learn. Honestly, most of the things you don't need to learn and are not worth learning. So I think the main takeaway from this video is just be selective about what you want to learn. Now, of course, I'm not saying don't learn anything. If you don't want to learn anything and don't want to change your workflow in any kind of way, then you're kind of in the wrong industry because for every fad framework, there are some legitimate new great technologies that come along that are really useful. So for example, I was working on WordPress websites for years and then static site generators really started to catch on. And so making websites with static site generators, which don't need to pull posts from database like WordPress does, really makes websites a lot faster. And of course it's a lot better than just using HTML and CSS on a more complicated website where you have a lot of pages and moving parts. 
So learning something like Hugo, a static site generator that I like, has really benefited me and my workflow. So I would just strike a balance between these two. Don't learn too much where you're completely overwhelmed with everything that you have to learn, but don't just be completely stuck in the past. You should try to learn new things and improve your workflow and just make yourself more useful. But don't feel like you're falling behind everybody just because you're not hopping on the latest and greatest trend. There's absolutely no need for that if you don't want to. And so that's how I managed to live a relatively stress-free web developer life. And I don't like stress and neither should you. So that's how I would do things as well.